We ready to go? Thank you. I'd like to welcome everyone to uh, the budget workshop. Um, what we're going to do is uh, Meredith uh, Nedo, the superintendent, is going to present the uh, her budget for 2012-2013, and then after the budget presentation, we'll uh, uh, update everyone on the calendar for future budget uh, workshops and um, when the, the budget will be available on the website and uh, the, the recommended uh, format if you have any follow-up questions, um, who to contact. So without further ado, I'll let Meredith um, walk us through the budget. Thank you very much, Michael, and thank you um, all for your help getting us to this point. Um, this process starts obviously a bit earlier than where we are today with um, the work of people in the schools um, and then subsequently the work of the administrative team to produce a budget um, for us to bring forward to you. And um, Pauline and her team um, work very hard to pull all the information together and um, present it to you in this format. So I will reference um, both the binder and the slides as we work through, and we'll take some time for questions, but feel free to stop me if there are things that aren't clear. Away we go. So initially, our number one budget goal, meet the needs of students. That's, that's the bottom line. That's what we're here to do. Um, that's education in a nutshell. The second goal that we frame really is to try to move the district forward. How are we advancing our priorities and um, continuing to make progress? Third um, is to be sensitive to the current financial climate. And, you know, obviously we know it's a difficult time for people, um, and we have done our best, I think, to um, reflect that in our budget goals. If you look at the 11-12 budget, it was $21,124,690. Um, this year's budget reflects a 2.9% increase in expenditures. And we'll talk about what helps make that up. In 2013, one of the challenges we faced are continued reductions in revenue. As you know, we've lost state funding and uh, education jobs funding um, as well. And you'll see further detail about this later in your slides. Um, here in Cape Elizabeth, last spring, the district identified a multi-year focus on goals of literacy and professional learning communities. And you'll see um, pieces of that tied into the budget as we work our th way through. This is the second year of the three-year teacher contract. So this year's um, contract agreement had a 2% um, maximum salary increase as tied into um, the CPI. Transportation in this year's budget will move under the oversight of facilities and maintenance. The pool, which is currently a municipal department, will move into um, and under the auspices of community services. And um, from a staffing standpoint, we've seen an increase in the number of special education teachers, which has been explained in some um, form to you at prior meetings, and we'll talk more about that when we move into the staffing conversations, uh, which I believe will be our next workshop, um, which has been offset by a reduction in the support staff. Big picture. As we look in a bit more detail at budget changes, um, the majority of the increases, $400,000, are um, due to increases in our negotiated contracts. Um, and some of our contracts are not yet negotiated, so we put some placeholders in for those. But um, we've projected a 10% increase in health benefits at this point. Um, we don't get those final numbers until a bit later on. Um, hopefully before the vote, but um, not always. The schools, um, you'll notice not very significant changes at Pond Cove or the middle school. At the high school, um, a $25,000 increase, about $11,000 of that is due to the tuition for the PATHS, Portland Area Technology um, Technical High School, and that's because of the formula for that and um, our increase in students attending. Software for the Achievement Center, um, increase in prices for some of the site licenses, and we're working currently with that vendor, Plato, to see if there are some other options and with looking also with other vendors. Increase in the co-curricular um, travel and dues and fees, and that, again, is largely due to an increase in participation. And details about all of those things are included in the high school tab, wherever it is here, of your budget binder. Feel free to flip to that at any time. 
The superintendent's office, you'll see an increase in the legal line, um, which really was to reflect um, prior year expenditures. In facilities, uh, an increase in heating oil. Um, we budgeted 325 for the next school year. Uh, as David said earlier, we're not quite sure whether that's going to be a reasonable projection or not, but um, that's our best guess at this time. An increase of $38,000 in the um, CIP and in contracted services. And if you look uh, over in our debt service column, there's a negative $34,000 in red on the right-hand side. And so the um, plan that was articulated in prior years had been as debt service was decreased to increase the expend the capital capital geez, capital expenditures. Transportation, um, increase in cost of the bus lease. Staff and student support, we had, I can't remember the exact number, but a fairly substantial increase in course requests from our teachers. And according to the collective bargaining unit, they are entitled to be reimbursed for up to nine credits um, of continuing education. You'll see a decrease in staff development, and that um, decrease is largely in part due to a position that you'll hear described a bit later, but a position for a K-12 literacy coordinator. Um, that $23,000 has been spent roughly, um, roughly that amount of money um, the last couple of years on consultants in the area of literacy. So we're using, putting that money, the consultancy money, towards a full-time position. And a slight increase in the NWEA testing that's given in the spring um, because we have some other assessments that are sort of filling that void, particularly at the high school level. Increase in instructional support. Um, the vast majority of that is due to increases in out-of-district tuition. And again, an increase in the legal line um, to really comply with prior year expenditures. If you look at athletics, you see an increase of $23,000 at the middle school level. It's a bit misleading um, because later on when we look at revenues, or down below when you look at revenues, not, Pauline, feel free to jump on me if I miss any of these, but if you look at revenues, um, there's a $19,000 increase in middle school activity fees. Um, in prior years, or, um, the middle school athletics have been run through the community services program, so that in and out has been done in community services um, to simplify communication and to keep community services focused on their job, which is providing programming for the community at large, and um, keep the school focused on its job, which is focusing on the responsibility for students and their extra co- and extracurricular activities. We've moved that back into the school operating budget, so that trade-off is there. Uh, debt service, we've already spoken about, and an increase um, in the technology lease. Um, Again, if you'll remember, um, Gary shared this in his memo as we signed um, the lease last board meeting, um, that we have a series of leases. It's the most cost-effective way to purchase um, and stay up to date with our computer replacement cycle. So that $14,000 is a shift in um, cost from the prior year and is in part due to the iPad purchases for next year. And then the revenue shifts. As I mentioned, we're losing a fairly substantial amount of our state revenue share. It's roughly a 12% decrease in state revenue. The federal jobs bill funds, which we knew would be going away, are leaving. Um, Medicaid funds, the district had set aside funds last year anticipating um, that these federal funds would go away, so we would have access to the Medicaid funds. So we've projected to use those or plan to use those for next year. Uh, state agency clients are basically is funding that we receive from the state for children who are in foster care, living in Cape Elizabeth, and attending our schools. Um, so that decreases because we have fewer students. Middle school activity fees we've spoken about, and um, facilities rental are when the school facilities are used by outside groups who pay us a fee for that service. Another way to look at all of this information is the summary of accounts. Again, if you look at our salary and benefits line, which is uh, roughly 80% of our operating budget, an increase of $400,000, a 2.4% increase. The schools combined, um, 
as you take out the salary and benefits, those other three, those next three lines represent only about 3% of the operating budget. The Office of the Superintendent is about 1% of the operating budget. Custodial and facilities is about 5.5% of the operating budget. Transportation, uh, well, actually, superintendent's office is about half a percent, and transportation is about one percent. Staff and student support, again, a little less than one percent. I believe it's around seven tenths. I don't have my notes. <laughs> my slideshow notes didn't print. Um, uh, volunteer services uh, basically funds a um, very limited amount of supplies for Gail Schmader, our volunteer coordinator, um, and there's a huge return on that investment of $690. Instructional support. Athletics, and um, we've spoken about that increase. Athletics is roughly 1%. Um, instructional support closer to 3, 25 or 3. Debt service, again, about 6% of our budget. Technology, and um, the same level of contingency funding as we had in the operating budget last year, $70,000. So as we look at um, expenditures and revenues, um, again, the total expenditures are a 2.9% increase over last year. And I will draw your attention in the back of your binder under other, it's the only item under other at the moment, um, to a three-year budget projection. Last year, um, the 11-12 budget was a 2.2% increase over prior year, and at that time, the projection for this year was a 3.6% increase in expenditures. While we've held that increase to 2.9%, um, the impact on the projected increase to um, property taxes for the education portion of the budget is 3.4%. Um, and again, even though last year we were projecting a 3.6% increase, that would have uh, uh, resulted in a 2.9% impact to taxes because of that significant reduction in revenue. The 2.9% um, expenditure increase nets us a 3.4% impact on property taxes. And that's, uh, if you, again, if you see for a median price home, that's a $162 increase over prior year. There's a lovely um, slide about what's happened um, with school funding based on the state subsidy changes. Remember that there was a bit of an artificial um, increase to those numbers in the couple of the prior years due to the education jobs funds um, coming from the federal government. <coughs> so again, a 2.9% increase in expenditures. And we have lots of workshops ahead of us to dive into some of the details. Um, I'm just going to walk you through the binder a little bit so you have a sense of what's in some of these tabs before we talk about the detail. In the very front are most of the documents that you saw in tonight's slides. Um, again, my budget overview. Next are salaries and benefits. And um, again, if you look at um, proposed changes from 11-12 to 12-13, you'll see there's a net decrease of 9.6 staff members from um, last year to this year. Uh, most of those are in the support staff area. And as we spoke about in the special education um, area due to sort of a, a shift in um, priorities and um, really a philosophical effort to um, better address student needs. The detail of the proposed staff changes are included on the next page, page two of that section. Um, you see decreases in um, educational technicians, some shifts. Um, for um, the high school, you'll see, for example, the 1.0 decrease um, in the literacy position at the high school 
And if you look at the bottom of that page, you see the increase of a K-12 literacy coordinator position. Job description for that position is in the next section of your budget. Um, at the high school level, and again, there's some detail about these reductions included in the high school tab of your budget. Um, at this point, we're projecting a 0.2 decrease in English at the high school, two-tenths position, a one-tenth reduction in drama, and a one-tenth reduction in choral music, and um, those are all driven by student enrollment. The increase in co-curricular stipends. Um, and a shift um, in an educational technician position um, due to the job requirements and responsibilities. In the instructional support department, again, you see the addition of four teacher positions offset um, by the reduction of 12 and a half educational technicians. And you see a proposed um, two tenths reduction in social work services. The high school level, the addition of a girls JV volleyball coach in athletics, and that's a Title IX um, funding issue for us. It's part of the Title IX plan to phase in that program. Details by school and by department of all salaries and benefits are included in the next section. There's multiple, multiple pages. Job description, as I mentioned, the K-12 literacy coordinator, a draft job description for that position is included. Um, there is a job description for um, an administrative assistant to um, what would be the director of facilities and transportation. Um, that position currently exists at a part-time level. That position is um, currently funded, the part-time position is currently funded by the town with transportation moving into that department. Um, the town and school district would share costs for that position. And as you will recall from our fall workshop about facilities, maintenance and transportation, that move is um, at no cost to the district. It's simply a reallocation of the resources and an attempt to look at um, the efficiency and um, oversight for, um, for the work. The next positions, currently the transportation scheduler and school bus drivers report to the Director of Community Services. With this change, they would then report to the Director of Facilities and Maintenance. Can you just refer to a page number when you're discussing I certainly can. I apologize. It's easier for me to follow. I've, I've yep. lost. I'm in the Job Descriptions tab. Well, it won't help you because... No they're, they're all, they're all one. labeled number oh, one okay. in this particular well, at least section. Coming to the right section. <laughs> okay, thank you. You're welcome. The director of community services position again formerly had oversight um, for transportation that has been eliminated, um, and the responsibility for the pool, which are currently overseen by the community services director, even though they're a municipal department, is still contained in that budget, uh, in that job description. And then the director of facilities job description adds um, the, the responsibilities regarding transportation. The next sections are for Pond Cove. And you'll see um, Tom's narrative about changes to his budget, as well as the detail of the Pond Cove budget. Similarly, you'll find Steve's narrative about the middle school. I'm including enrollment. Each of these school sections includes enrollment. And then the detail about the operating budget of the school. Jeff's narrative for the high school. And the detail about the high school operating budget. The office of the superintendent. Facilities and transportation, which begins with Greg's narrative. And reviews 
um, the information regarding the move for, of transportation into that section. Staff and student support, volunteer services, instructional support. And you'll see the staffing and enrollment projections in that area with Jane Golding's narrative and the detail of um, the district budget as well as um, I already said, staffing and enrollment. <laughs> the athletic budget with Jeff Forex narrative in detail. The exciting debt service spreadsheet of all the detail. Technology with Gary's narrative. Contingency, a detailed sheet on enrollment under the enrollment tab, which gives you many, many years worth of history, and our projection for next year. And we shared with you again at a prior finance workshop um, some long range planning projections regarding enrollment and our historical enrollment trends. The community services budget with Janet's narrative. And detail, and you remember that community services again is a cost neutral department. They budget to break even. And also included in that section is the pool. To your next to last tab is the section on federal funds, the special funds um, portion of the budget. The detail on um, planned expenditures to the best of our ability because those numbers we usually don't receive until much, much later. And again, finally, the three year um, budget projection. And as you'll see, we've tried to hold um, increases pretty level across um, the next couple of years as well. There's lots of information in here. I know we aren't going to cover it all tonight. Um, but if you look back at prior meetings um, and in conversation with um, your finance chair, um, we laid out a possible plan for future budget workshops, which would be to address staffing and benefits in detail um, at the March 6th meeting and at that same meeting to talk about um, the individual school budgets for Pond Cove Middle School to High School and the Instructional Support Department. At the March 20th meeting, to focus on um, most of um, the other areas of the budget, again, that smaller percentage, the roughly 15% uh, percent that's left, capital improvements, facilities, and maintenance, transportation, staff and student support, technology, and athletics, as well as the community services and pool departments. Um, March 27th. The ideal would be to return to any unfinished items and adopt the budget, but if you'll recall, your budget calendar has a date for the 29th of March as well, um, should we need some additional time. It's an ambitious schedule. And um, just to remind everyone on the, the process, we'll use a similar process as we did last year for the budget. Um, <coughs> The hope is, uh, first of all, if you have any uh, questions that aren't addressed in your packet, uh, for example, if you have any questions on staffing or benefits, uh, Pond Cove, instructional support, if you would submit uh, those questions to myself and then I'll, for, uh, I'll review them and hopefully uh, I can address them or, with, uh, or I'll forward them to Pauline or Meredith. And the hope is, as we go through, for example, the March 6th meeting, 
that uh, you know any questions that aren't addressing the budget we can communicate with the DLT and we can uh, have any questions addressed on those topic items so the hope would be if we have staffing and benefits questions that uh, they're sent beforehand and then we respond and provide the, the school board uh, with, with the information they need so when we're done at that meeting that we've we've addressed uh, those items obviously some items will come up from conversations and I'll I'll keep a running list of kind of unaddressed or areas that a school board member will need more information and we'll try to have that issue addressed in uh, that way we, w we won't get to the last meeting and have um, many on a, you know a lot of outstanding issues so I'd like to keep a kind of a running tab and we use this format last year um, so that means if you do have questions uh, that aren't addressed please get get them to me as soon as possible because our goal is when we're done with that meeting that we've addressed those portions of the budget and like Meredith said at our first meeting uh, roughly 85 percent of budget items will be addressed at that meeting so please um, you know for those those questions uh, to me uh, for the public uh, the budget information will be available on the website by the by the end of the week um, hopefully uh, sooner but uh, definitely by uh, Friday and uh, if uh, the public um, we encourage you to attend the workshops um, if you do have questions the earlier we get them the better we can prepare for uh, to respond um, so um, please send those to us if uh, if you do have questions and our our goal is to uh, um, address the questions communicate to the public um, the priorities of the district the, the reasoning behind um, the budget changes and um, have the school board make uh, or vote on the budget at the March 27th uh, meeting and um, given our desires to uh, give everyone sufficient time to uh, ask questions on the different budget items we would prefer to uh, hold off on any particular questions given we want to have everyone uh, give everyone the time and the opportunity to attend the budget workshops um, obviously if school board members there aren't any if there's uh, questions you have in terms of um, you know items you would like to have available at the March 6th meeting um, you know we can discuss that tonight um, but other than that we'd like to uh, defer to the already set agenda to go through some some of the line items um, or areas uh, at the budget workshop so uh, members of the the public can attend and we can uh, get information ready for for board members David do you have a question yes um, you say submit questions to you in advance I assume that we're going to uh, in public describe the question and describe the answer I didn't hear that I assume I'm assuming that but I like to have it uh, example be if there's information you uh, would need to make a, a, a decision on you know staffing or benefits if that information is not in the budget packet uh, if you'd let us know um, you know if there's information you would like to see to help you better understand a, a change in uh, expenditure uh, or so that way we, it could be prepared ahead of, ahead of the meeting and be available for for your review I'm not sure I got my answer and I'm sorry to be a lawyer but what my question was if I submit my questions in advance will at the public hearing my question be uh, elucidated or whatever the word is I'm too tired now and answered in public you yes want no. someone to actually read your question well, and no, then if, have if, it if, answered right. or, do, or do you want it just included in um, a presentation it doesn't matter to me how it's done, but if I have a question as a board member, it should be a question that the public hears, and the answer should be an answer the public hears. And I see Meredith nodding. I thought it was a fairly simple question. It doesn't matter to me how it's done, but I think that if I have a question, whether it's technically mentioned in here or it's a question about something that is mentioned in here, that I get my, if I'm submitting in advance, which I have no problem with, give people a chance to answer it I just want my question answered at the public hearing 
And I want to answer your questions at the public hearing. Thank and you. again, the request to have them in advance is just to make sure we're as prepared uh, and make the best use of our time as that we I'm can. I'm trying to clarify that for the public because I assumed that that's what was being done. But Absolutely. I think you might accuse us of doing something behind the scenes that we're not willing to do in public because right. we are willing to do it in public. But it would be, you know, if you wanted to say what, it, you know, if you had a question, if there's a schedule in a prior budget workshop that you wanted to see and it wasn't in this one, then we could prepare. Now, we may not state publicly, you know, why wasn't that scheduled? So there's more information you need. It will provide time to, to gather. So obviously, questions regarding, you know, reasoning or whatever, th those will be asked at, uh, at the workshop. I assume that you would want that question in advance as well, like why, for example, do we Yes, we would. Thank you. I can give you an example. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to sneak in my question. <laughs> <laughs> I know you were. <laughs> no, it's not hard to wait. I was just trying to sneak it in. <laughs> um, again, all of these documents will be available on the website. Um, I'm looking at Gary because we're having a little difficulty accessing um, our documents on the server right now, but we're assured that they will be ready to go for us tomorrow. So um, we will get them posted as soon as we're able to get back to them. I just had um, on page 20, Which and now I'm not sure tab? what section. Um, but it's uh, regarding the news crew in Chiwanki. There is a yellow highlighted section through it, and I just wanted to know what the highlights here in those changes done to the curricular mm -hmm. stipends. Mm -hmm. curricular. They're cool. under salaries It'll and benefits. It'll be in your budget book when you read your narrative. Uh, yeah, okay. I didn't. Uh, okay. It, so yep. that it is addressed in the narrative, but okay, um, be more than we can certainly speak to those. Um, I said no, that was like yeah. a, high, a highlight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That was distracting from other things. It distracted me, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was <laughs> right. Maybe you didn't yellow. brain freeze, so you wouldn't ask the really tough question. Yellow. Yeah. 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 And I know I have received, and I believe the board has received some correspondence um, from members of the public who have questions about particular staffing issues. So um, echoing Michael's comments, we certainly want to address those um, at upcoming meetings. And March 6th will be um, the focus on staffing and benefits. Um, so uh, those are where most of the questions I have seen um, have pertained to. So does anyone have any uh, further questions? I'll just say, I, I know the budget presentation is always eagerly anticipated and people expect this crescendo moment, but I have to say it's ongoing work for us. And so, um, you know, it, it doesn't feel quite as dramatic um, for those of us sitting, or th those of us on the um, administrative side or in, on the school side, because this is a work that, um, this is work that goes on year round for us. And um, again, I think for the board this year, due to the time that you've spent in some of the finance workshops, you've already um, begin, begun to under better understand some of these topics. And so, um, you know, we certainly want the public to feel comfortable with the budget proposal and understand that. And um, I look forward to working through the process. Um, having read through this a little bit, I, I will say, and I, I mean, I feel like in all my years on the board, I, I think this is such a transparent budget. I think any member of the public could get online and look at this and really be able to to get a clear understanding of the budget pretty quickly. Um, I think our administrators have done a great job explaining um, the pluses and minuses and, and um, being very creative with um, the little, the little bit of extra money in, in places that they've been able to use, and um, uh, I appreciate that. I, I think it's, you know, I won't say too much about it because I know other people still have to read it, but I think it is very clearly laid out, very well done, um, and I appreciate that. It's very easy to read through and understand.
Okay. Uh, thank you, and um, we look forward to uh, working through the budget, and uh, you'll find the materials available on the website. Uh, it sounds like tomorrow, so uh, we look forward to uh, presenting the budget and uh, walking everyone through uh, the drivers and, and how the budget represents uh, the priorities of the district and some of the long-term goals uh, we set uh, last year. So thank you for uh, your time. Yeah, I'm sick of correcting the legality of this. Yeah. But the way you wrote it, motion.